Hi, I'm Jordan Smith from Rapido Trains Inc. and I'm back today for our July unboxing video. As you can see, I'm not in the boardroom today. We figured it was getting really tiring being in that room all the time and it's kind of gross in there. So we're in a random cubby hole somewhere in the office. So as you can see, um, right. Anyways, as you can see, we've got a few interesting new products to show you. We've got our HO scale B36-7 production models. We've got three uh, road numbers to show you today. We've got the HO scale GP20, that's the uh, 20,000 gallon Procore tank cars. Those are uh, production samples. We also have the HO scale JRX meat reefers. Uh, those are also production models. They're actually in the warehouse right now being processed and will be shipped out to dealers shortly. And finally, if you stick around right to the end of the video, uh, we might have something special that uh, you'll be interested in, so make sure you stick around right to the end. All right, so let's start with the unboxing. We've got the two units, the Southern Pacific and the Conrail Quality Unit already unpacked, but uh, let's uh, open up the Kodachrome unit. Cover the box, we have Southern Pacific uh, 7763, and that's also with all the late details, just like our new model. We'll be looking at that in a second. We've got our owner's manual, random paperwork, exploded parts diagram, in case you need any uh, parts. We've got a couple of stickers. Again, we're putting that in uh, all our new diesels now. Just take off the top foam. And there we go. And we've also got a detailed parts pack. We'll put that aside and we'll look at that in one second. You see there? Take the plastic off the top of the model. And lift it out. Got the little shoes on there to keep uh, the model from wiggling around too much in the package. I'm just going to take those foam spacers out. Alright, so as you can see, we have three different B36 uh, models uh, in front of me here. These are all new versions that we haven't done in previous releases. That was in the first release. This is the, uh, the second release we're on to right now. We've got Conrail Quality, we've got Santa Fe Kodachrome, and finally we've got Southern Pacific. So starting off with the SP sample, this version represents the B Southern Pacific's B-36 fleet as they appeared towards uh, the late 80s and early 90s. And they actually showed up like this well into the, uh, into the UP years, into the early years of uh, the merger uh, before they were retired in the, uh, the late 90s. The most famous kind of SP uh, feature of all of their locomotives, including the B-36s that delivered, were the full light package. You had the UDE light, that was the red emergency light, the headlight, and also the uh, oscillating headlight which is just above the cab windows on the number boards, between the number boards. So during the failed SPSF merger in the 80s, what SP did was they actually retrofitted a lot of their locomotive fleet with Santa Fe style straddle beacons and uh, we've actually replicated those features in our latest run of B36-7s. Looking at the front there you can see the uh, plated area where the, the Ocitrol light was. We've got the straddle light on its own kind of custom platform just above the number boards. Of course, this is an operating feature. We'll show you that in a few minutes. And turning the engine around, you've got the bare bones uh, light package. You can see everything has either been plated or removed except for the actual headlight. Otherwise, these were, were very similar to how they operated as delivered uh, around 80, 84-ish when they, when they first came online. Uh, you've got your air conditioner, you've got your, your Sinclair antenna. Uh, you've got your P3 horn just behind the cab there that was retrofitted in around, uh, most of the units got that around 80, 85, 86. The original horns were, were much too loud. And of course we've included all the same, uh, the same fine detail that we've included in our previous releases of B36. We've got uh, separate MU hoses, coupler cut bars, uh, train airlines, separately applied uh, grab irons. We've got the metal railings with the plastic stanchions, all the grill work. That's etched metal for the top of the radiator grills there. Walkway tread, floating bolster FB2 trucks, which look really good. Some of the standard features. And that also has the SP style fuel tank and uh, many other neat SP features. So moving along to Santa Fe. This is the famous or infamous uh, Kodachrome scheme, depending on uh, your perspective on things. Personally, I'm a big fan of these. A lot of the other guys around the office don't like them, but I mean, the 80s, can you go wrong? Just like the original release, we've got the Strato Beacon in amber, of course, like they should be. And we've also got, um, right, anyway, we've also got all the standard features that the Santa Fe units have. 
that the Sinclair antenna. A lot of people might be saying, why is that mounted backwards? But in fact, that's how Santa Fe did that. They mounted them kind of reverse to what uh, you'd expect them to be. So for anyone asking, they are correct. The air conditioner on the roof, again, all of the same uh, the metal, metal handrails with all the uh, plastic stanchions. Santa Fe style light package, the nose headlights plated while you have the headlight just between the number boards there. Full anti-climber, this is a feature that wasn't included on the SP units, but otherwise you got the same really, really neat details there. And also uh, the fuel tank is specifically the Santa Fe fuel tank, it's not the same as the SP ones. Very early on, when uh, Santa Fe repainted their B36s, uh, 74 to 97 actually still had the baffles installed. So um, we've included that in the parts package. If you want to install the baffle, it is, uh, it's there for you to install as an option. We'll put that one aside. That's actually mine. This is another paint scheme we didn't include in the first release. We were holding that off. We've got Conrail quality. We've got uh, two different numbers in this scheme, then also two numbers in the standard scheme with the white sill stripe. Standard Conrail features, you've got the operating uh, red bug eye markers on the nose. That's actually on the nose and on the uh, on the long hood. So those are uh, those are functioning. You've got the operating headlight, number boards. All the number boards uh, are are separately operable on all these models. Full cab interiors. All of uh, all of those same awesome features. And of course, on the Conrail B thirty six sevens, we have operating ditch lights on the front, uh, right under the anti climber. None on the rear. And they do operate. Uh, when you activate the horn on the Conrail B36s, they do alternate as with the prototype. They look pretty good, so why don't we head over to the test track and we can have a look at some of the operating uh, features on these really cool models. Again, well, we're going to start off with the Conrail quality unit. And as mentioned before, this is a uh, mid to mid 90s version of the engine. So we've got ditch lights equipped on the front pilot. So first off, let's start with the number board lights, which are on F19. We've got the headlight. And we've also got the ditch lights. There we go. And if we hit reverse and turn on the markers, we can see those red uh, bug eye markers on the nose. Beautiful. And those markers are activated with function 11. These models are equipped with GE 16.7 FDL prime mover sounds. Oh, we activate the horn next. As you can see, when the horn is activated, the alternating ditch lights also synchronize and then go back to normal after a few seconds. Put the bell on that one. We've got flange squeal on F3. F5 activates the Doppler horn, which also activates the alternating ditch lights on the Conrail units. Next up, we've got the Santa Fe Kodachrome B36 on the test track. First, we're going to turn the number of words on with F19. You can see those marvelously bright and bold uh, white letters with the red background. Very cool in 80s. We've got the headlight, of course. We've got the class lights mounted in the nose on F11. And of course, the Stratolite beacon. The amber Stratolite beacon, which is amber. Once we get that turned on, we'll see the amber beacon on F17, which is very amber. Did I mention that the beacons are amber on the amber beacons? Looks great, doesn't it? We've got the four SMD in there. Fantastic. Next, of course, we've got Southern Pacific in the uh, with the later retrofitted Stratolite beacon. So we're gonna turn on those nose headlights first. No class lights on this one, but we do have the number boards already lit up. And uh, we've actually done new tooling on this for the SP version of the Stratolite beacon. 
they were retrofitted with this little kind of platform just above the uh, number boards. And as you can see, the amber beacon is very amber again. You can see that four SMD uh, flash pattern in amber, of course, and they look terrific. So next up, I have our all new HO scale Procore GP20, that's 20,000 gallon general purpose tank cars. So let's have a look. We've got some pretty significantly different versions here. If you actually look at some of the close details, I've got uh, one still boxed up. So let's start opening it and have a look. Just put the uh, box aside there. It's our standard Rapido box. We've got the two piece clamshell, which is very rigid. One thing we've got here right off the top, we've got the spare parts pack. This is a skid plate uh, which was retrofitted onto the, uh, the underbody valve. Um, this was a feature that was kind of converted starting in the early 1980s and all, all the later cars got this. Um, on the as delivered cars generally we've not included this uh, installed from the factory but the later ones uh, do have them on there and if you want to retrofit that part in uh, you can. So lift off the film here and pull the car out. So this is the North American uh, NCTX uh, general purpose tank. Of course, we've got our exploded parts diagram, as well as the instructions in both English and French, with a quick overview of the prototypes and, uh, and some of the features of the models. So some of the details that we've got, again, geez. So, some of the details that we've got on this, uh, this is actually the as-delivered car, so you have the 70-ton trucks with 33-inch wheels, full underbody brake rigging and detailing, you've got all the side rods and everything. We have actually two different types of coupler cut bars. Uh, as you can see, this is the earlier version, there's a different version on the later cars, we'll have a look at that in a little bit. This car represents kind of the late 70s, so you've got the uh, two-panel cot stencils, but you also have the ACI labels on the side there. This has the earlier version of the underbody valve. Later versions, like mentioned before, will have that little skid plate. We've got full end detailing. So you've got your brake wheel, you've got your see-through walkway. That's all etched walkways. Same with the roof. All etched, uh, etched metal pieces with uh, all of the handrails separately applied. Different vents on the roof as well. We've got the weld lines as per prototype. Uh, it's just a neat little car. So this is the modern Procore. This one was uh, kind of, you got that faded out paint. It's been patched with the new logo. You can see the patchwork where the old logo's uh, painted over. Um, so this is good kind of from the 90s onward. You've got the three panel uh, cot stencils. You've got all the uh, DOT hazard labeling and stuff like that. You've got, again, all of the etched metal details, the, the roof hatches, full underbody detailing, all the brake lines. This has the 100 ton, 36 inch wheel trucks and of course the later version of the uh, coupler cut lever. All in all, very beautiful cars. They're on the water right now and should be arriving either towards the end of July or in early August. So uh, we'll be posting updates as they, uh, as they come. Hey Jordan, you got some mail. Oh great, my posters are here. My TWA posters from the 60s, great. Thank you. No problem. So moving along, next we've got our HO scale GARX meat reefers. This is the first time we've rerun these cars in several years now, and we've got lots of new paint schemes and uh, paint schemes we've done in the past uh, returning with more road numbers. So I'm going to open this car up right now, and we'll have a quick look at the details. Anyway, open it up there. As you can see, we've got our instruction booklet. Quick little uh, guide there, plus the exploded parts menu. Open it up from the packaging, Just peel back the wrapping, pop it into the box. There we go. It's actually a really neat car. So um, these cars, um, aside from being colorful, I, uh, you know, I don't know anything about these cars. I think it's time to call Bill. Hey, Bill. Hi, Bill Schneider from Rapido Trains Inc. And I have some samples here of our 37-foot uh, uh, General American Meat Reefer in HO scale. These cars were built uh, between 1937 and 1940. Um, they were used for hauling meat products, and they uh, survived right up until the early 1970s in a lot of cases. 
So they actually cover a very broad range, even though it's a, it's a wood car. A um, few unique features. They have uh, General American uh, style uh, uh, roof hatches here, which have a uh, diamond tread pattern on them, unique to General American. Uh, we have a full underbody, and this was actually a fairly modern car for its day in terms of construction because it did have a full steel underbody. Uh, separate grab irons, separate ladders, uh, separate coupler boxes for those who want to change out couplers, and it also comes with our uh, McDonald Cartier couplers in it as well, our uh, KD compatible couplers. Um, a number of different paint schemes available. These are just some that I happen to have here at the, at the house from the earlier runs. Uh, including one that uh, Dan Darnell in our office had weathered up using some of our uh, Rapido Proto paint, just to give you an idea of how that might work, and we'll show you some of that in detail. Thanks, Fritz. You weren't much help. Okay, thanks, Bill. It's always good to know that if uh, you need someone with knowledge about transition era or older rolling stock, Bill's the guy to go to. So, finally, we've got the Maybe the main thing for this video, the first Turboliner HO scale samples have just arrived. We've got the power cars, we've got the coach, we've got the cafe lounge. They look great. We've got the power cars here. Again, this is our first tooled samples. We've got the full underbody detailing there. Lots of etched metal parts, separate brake lines, brake details, air conditioner detail. Uh, even got the sand lines and everything on the truck. These are working samples, so hopefully we can have a painted sample done up in, uh, in the near future. We have some small uh, uh, modifications and fit and finish issues we're, we're tackling right now. And a couple issues to make them run a little bit more reliably, but so far we're really impressed. So that's just a quick preview of the Turboliners, and we'll do a full operating video coming soon. So stay tuned for that. We will get that um, done as soon as we can without interruption. So thanks so much for joining me today for our latest uh, unboxing. This is the July unboxing and sample review. We will see you again in August when we have lots of new stuff coming in. So stay tuned. We'll see you later. Bye now.